Do you wanna know some of the best and my most favorite time-saving features in ClickUp? Well, good news, I'm about to share them with you. Hey guys, my name is Christy. I'm the CEO and founder of DeSilva Life and a vetted ClickUp consultant. At DeSilva Life, we are on a mission to help other business owners and companies get organized with the systems and tools they need to really grow and scale their business with ease. So we are all on a mission to save time and ClickUp, the project management tool, does such an amazing job at that. Obviously the platform as a whole is designed to be more productive, but in today's video, I just want to share with you a few of my favorite time-saving tips. So let's dive in. So like I mentioned, ClickUp as a platform overall has really done amazing things with the project management and productivity realm. So everything that they do intentionally, obviously, is to save you as much time as possible and really increase your productivity. But in this video, I just want to go over some structural things that really help in like the basic hierarchy and saving time, as well as some shortcuts and hotkeys, and then get into into a little bit of automations to show you the power of those as well. So let's first dive in and talk about some basic time-saving features when it comes to mapping out your process into like a list or workflow. So I'm gonna start by going over my YouTube workflow and showing you how when you're mapping out a process, how the features of using custom fields and then filters and grouping in different views really is gonna save you so much time and brain space because you're always gonna know where every single thing is and where each piece of the puzzle is along the pipeline. So if you have not seen already, I actually have another whole video going through this entire YouTube workflow if you're interested in it, but just a quick overview of what we have going on here. The parent task would be the main video, right? So this video is time-saving features in ClickUp. That would be its own separate task. And then we have subtasks underneath those tasks with every single thing that has to be done from start to finish to bring that video to production with the due dates and all that good stuff. The subtasks only ever hit to do and complete, although someone could change the status there, we always just say it's either to do or complete, whereas the video or the parent task, we're always gonna be able to see what that video is, like what the status of that video is. So is it in queue, scripting, ready to film, filmed, editing, scheduled, published, etc. right? So obviously that's gonna save you time and brain space because you're gonna be able to see where every single step, where every single task is, um, or video in this case. But then let's talk about the custom fields as well. So when you're building out this process, we have the start and due date, right, for the production of the video, and then start and due dates for the subtasks as well. And don't mind these being overdue. <laughs> um, this is just our template. Um, but we also added a couple things here to really make our life easier. So we added a date custom field for the published date and now a note on custom fields. Custom fields are to be added to a list or maybe a folder or space where every single task underneath that list is going to most likely going to have that custom field filled. So for example, every single video is gonna have a published date, it's gonna have an SEO doc linked, it's gonna have a film date, and it's gonna have a video folder in Dropbox. So you wanna think of custom fields as, is there anything that are like data points that we wanna know about this task that is gonna be consistent for every task and we'll always just have that information at a glance instead of having to search for it anywhere, even on the inside of the task as well. Now, things a note about custom fields as well, if you guys are just diving in, um, custom fields can be shown on the outside or you can always hide it, but they will always show on the inside of the task right under the description. So you'll see here are all the custom fields. We also have different custom fields in here for gathering analytics, which I'll show you in a second, um, but you'll be able to see then these custom fields filled out. So now just bringing that custom field back, I'll click show slash hide and I'll get it from the bottom. And that one was the folder, video folder. Um, okay, so 
Example custom fields are going to just save us time and energy, right? So not only do we have the published date and the film date, but then also a linked docs field. Now this isn't a custom field, this is actually a native field. So you would actually see you have linked tasks here. Um, linked docs would be right above this one. And what this is, is we have this doc view that has all of our SEO docs. And then once we go ahead and create the SEO doc for that video, we then just go to the link docs, click add doc, and then link that doc to the task. So anytime we're going to um, upload the video to YouTube or we need access to that document again, it's just click of a button. We don't have to go searching for it anywhere. So you can just see right away how the few things that we've set up in this list will absolutely save time. You're not wondering what date something is published. You're not wondering what status um, the video is in. You're not searching around for docs and then you're not searching around for the video folder. So with the folder, we actually link our Dropbox. And when you click on Dropbox, it's actually gonna bring you into your Dropbox. So when I click it, you'll see that it brings up I was already in the YouTube folder the last time I was here, but you might have to search to bring it back, right? And so then you can literally just click this here, click choose, and now every single time I'm going to work on this video and I need something from the folder or I'm uploading something to the folder, I just come to here, click this, and it opens up in a new tab to that Dropbox folder. Now, all of these things seem like little minuscule details, but if you do this to an entire process slash your entire business, think of the amount of time that's gonna compound and save you so much time. So those are just the basic hierarchy idea here, adding custom fields, statuses, things like that. Now let's talk about the different views at the top and filtering and grouping those things, right? So when you're creating a process in ClickUp, you wanna think of, okay, as I'm working on this process, as I'm in this YouTube list, as I'm working on this client project or creating this marketing campaign, what's the type of information I'm gonna to wanna to see and then you can create new views at the top. So for example, this is just the status view, right? We're seeing where every single video is along the pipeline, but then maybe you wanna have a view where it's grouped by month. So you can see which videos are going out in which month, right? And so this is where we used grouping, where we created another view, and I'll actually do this for you. Um, create another view called month, you can then pin it to the top so it's separated and you can drag these however you want. And then instead of the standard grouping it by status, then I grouped by the custom field month and it brought them in that order. Now you'll see this also looks different. I'll auto save this. Then this one, right? There are a lot more fields here. That's because once I did bring change this view, I then said, okay, now what custom fields do I wanna see on the outside? I wanna see, or general fields as well, right? I wanna see the status, I wanna see the film date and the publish date and the folder, right? And then you can always, again, move these around. Now a note as well, one other easier way to do this is you can always just click on the view and then um, duplicate this. You could duplicate it as a list or you can duplicate it as something else, um, a board, a calendar, etc. And then quick couple buttons and then it still has all those fields on the outside. Um, so just seeing the, instead of doing that each time, like being in here and then being like, let me see it by month and doing custom field month, you can always just have a few views at the top that are automatically filtered by what's the information you're most likely gonna wanna see. Now, a note about this as well, as I bring this up, I would recommend really trying to keep your views as condensed as possible. If you find that you're not using a view that you have often, then feel free to delete it because you don't wanna have view bar clutter. Um, but then just let me go quickly through the other ones here. Um, task calendar, so this is going to show up any um, tasks that are on the calendar. So let me go back to August, I think this one was. 
So this would be like, okay, what is the team working on? Who's doing what each day? Mm -hmm. And then there's also the publish calendar. So this is where it's going to bring in um, the filter. Hold on, let me pull this up to the correct month. Okay, so in July, you'll see this is um, filtering out or actually showing instead of the start and due date, it's showing the date custom field publish date. So now I'm not inundated with all the tasks, but instead I'm just seeing the when each video is going out on a calendar view, which is super nice. And then it's color coded by status. And then we also have an analytics tab. So this is where I pulled in some custom fields. Um, and I just decided to have those custom fields and we filtered out that the status is published because obviously you're not gonna be gathering analytics for videos that have not been published. And then having the SEO doc here as well, the doc view. So you can see the difference here with the different views in ClickUp, how you can use grouping and filtering to just save you time by saying, I always wanna see a group by status, by month, see the task calendar, publish calendar, analytics, and docs, right? So now with that, let's go into an example of automations and then we'll wrap up with some of my favorite just like tips and shortcuts. So we can stay in the YouTube calendar and I'll just give you an idea of a couple different automations that you can build within your business and now make this your own, make it unique to your process. But just an example for something like content creation, you can create automation so ClickUp is doing the heavy lifting for you. A couple of our most used and favorite automations are when a task changes status, it then reassigns the correct person that's responsible for that task next with a due date of one or two days later. So say you have a pipeline, and now this wouldn't be perfect for this example because we use so many subtasks and everyone has their tasks. So let's actually pop into Instagram. And note, this is our content calendar bundle. If you're like, ooh, what are all these things on the side? Blog, email marketing, Instagram, YouTube. This is our content calendar available in our shop at desilvalife.com slash shop. If you want access to all of these ClickUp templates to plug right in and manage your content system. Um, but for example, Instagram, we don't have subtasks. We actually, every single task is just its own and we use these statuses to function as like, okay, what's the next step? Do I have to film this? Is it ready to schedule? Does it need edits? Is it ready for review, etc.? And so what you can do here is, uh, for example, when the status changes from anything to ready for review, it's then going to reassign me with a due date of two days later. Now, say I'm working with my team member who then I review this, I'm like, okay, this needs edits or it's ready to schedule. I'll have a separate automation and let's actually create that. Um, so now we'll say, okay, if the status changes to needs edits or ready to schedule, then I'm going to reassign Jeff with a due date of one day later. Could be two days, one day, whatever you wanna do. Could be the same day, or we'll just say one, right? So now when I change these statuses, you'll see if this is um, ready for review, it's then going to reassign me with a due date of two days later. Okay, so you can just imagine how utilizing automations are really gonna save you so much time. Now things are just going to show up on your calendar um, or your team member's calendar. You're not gonna have to do any reassigning and things aren't going to be slipping through the cracks. So that was just a brief intro to automations. We also have a whole other video on automations. We have a ton of videos of ClickUp on our channel, so make sure to check that out. Um, that go even into more detail. But now let's wrap up with my favorite time-saving shortcuts. Okay, so first of all, let's go through slash commands. 
If you come into a task, a doc, a comment, a description, you can see here description or type forward slash for commands. So if you click forward slash on your keyboard, you're then going to have a whole table of shortcuts for you to just say, I wanna do a checklist, CH, enter, and now I have a checklist. Say I wanna do a table, table, and now I have a table. So check out that list of shortcuts, it's really amazing. Then another one of my favorite time-saving features is the favorites bar. So if you have not utilized your favorites bar yet, you can have, if I unpin this, this is how your favorites will show at first. So you can either have favorites as a drop down list or you can pin it to the top, which is my personal preference. And then you can go ahead and favorite anything you want. So here is an example of um, a vision board. I can have my calendar. I can have my important links. Basically, it's if you are access something very often, so whether it's a view or a task or a list, you're just going to click on that thing. So let's just do it with a task example. Click on this thing and click the three dots and then do add to favorites and then it's going to be on your favorites bar. You can always also right click and rename it on the favorites bar. It won't actually rename that task list folder, whatever it is, but it's just going to save you time instead of clicking a bunch of places to get to where you want. Simple tip. Um, another thing, you can minimize tasks. So just like you minimize a tab because you're like, I'm working on this, but I need it handy. You can actually minimize tasks into your task tray and then always click them open when needed and then X them out when you are done. And then lastly, I wanna talk about hotkeys. So hotkeys, if you go into your settings, then you're gonna see here hotkeys. Check out this list and see all the different things that you can just type on your keyboard to bring certain things up. So I recommend going into here, checking out what they have, but my absolute favorite one is the search function. So if you click Command K, it's going to bring up um, an entire search widget where you can then search anything within your ClickUp. So say I was going to do my profit first um, because it was the 10th or the 25th. I would just search and then do profit first. Say I was looking for my time blocking list. Command K, time blocking, instead of going through and clicking in all the spaces. So like I said, ClickUp has these really cool shortcuts just to save you time that you didn't even think of, um, but after time, you're just like a machine going through and clicking all the buttons and getting everything you need in a split second. So that is all the tips I have for this video today. I hope this was helpful for you and just gaining some more inspiration into how ClickUp can really save you time over the long run if you utilize its amazing features. So I hope that video is helpful for you and just gaining a little bit more tangible tips on how to save time using ClickUp. We actually have an entire module in our ClickUp course on tips and tricks when it comes to using ClickUp. I'll make sure to link it in the description below if you wanna check it out. But we also have some incredible ClickUp resources for free on our website at tosololife.com slash freebies. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel because we have so many other amazing ClickUp tutorials. With that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.